One of the things that we're trying to avoid right now, we have these power lines in the back. We're trying to make sure that the fire is staying away from the power lines, keep it before it gets to that fire break so that it doesn't come anywhere close to those lines. Brandon's using the leaf blower to try to push some of that water up into the grass to make sure it stays wet. It's much less likely to burn when there's water on the grass. So right now we're continuing our line down the side here and we have the wet grass now to help stop it along the fire break. Right now we have some pretty good flames going on, but it looks like this fire break is still holding at the moment. It's still pretty wet down here. So it hasn't crossed anywhere at this point. I'm gonna continue on and make sure that the line is holding down at the other end as well. Yeah, right now I'm walking down to this corner to make sure that I can see around the corner. There's poor visibility back there. So I just wanna get around this corner to make sure that the fire hasn't jumped the line at all, which it has not. Everything looks good, so I'm gonna come back down here with them on the line, make sure that this line, that the fire's not jumping anywhere right now. I think for us at least like situations like this we just improvise we're like okay do we have a great line no is it bush hog the way I would want it bush hog no it's not but there's water in the trail you know if there wasn't water in the trail we'd have to do something different or we'd have to do it slower or we'd have to get the ATV over here which wouldn't be a problem if there wasn't water in the trail we could drive the ATV over here but since there is water we're just using it to make our fire break as good as it can be and it it takes a little bit more time versus a you know a, a perfect disc or uh, bladed fire break that's nothing but dirt yeah it takes a little bit more time but that would be another probably thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for the landowner to pay to do this when we could charge him a hundred or two hundred bucks for us taking extra time today to do it this way so it ends up costing a lot less because if we can't find a way to make burning continue to be affordable, then it's not, it's not going to be an economically beneficial practice for landowners. They're going to quit doing it. So I know burning costs keep going up every year. And really, if you do it the way a farmer would do it with limited supplies and tools, you can still do it very cheaply. But when you decide that you're going to have a full-on Type 6 engine with 
everybody wearing, you know, 100% PPE with fire line shelters and, you know, everybody has a hand tool and you start doing it that way, yeah, burning's gonna cost a lot of money. Um, you know, when you have to put bladed fire brakes in every time you burn, but this is a perfectly suitable line for what we're doing today. So it just takes a little bit of TLC and a little, little bit more watching, but it works.